Welcome to Canada and the world. The content of the briefing includes. They brought us here to smell the death. Members of Alberta school football team charged with sex assault in locker room. Liberals extend amnesty order for assault-style firearms until after next election. Former Prince Edward Island Premier James Lee dead at 86. Thief used phony document in $20 million gold heist, lawsuit against Air Canada claims. They brought us here to smell the death. Telegraph. Israeli authorities have allowed reporters access to Kibbutz Bieri to show the world the aftermath of the massacre that took place there over the weekend. Major General Itai Virov stated that he wanted reporters to understand how a pogrom smells and to see the horror that occurred in order to understand the Israeli reaction. The bodies of the kibbutz residents had been removed, but the bodies of the Hamas fighters are still visible. The kibbutz was an easy target for the Hamas gunmen who went door to door, killing innocent families. Some were kidnapped, including a German-Israeli woman who was visiting her in-laws on the kibbutz. Her husband and daughter managed to escape, but she was taken back into the car by the Hamas insurgents. The death toll is unclear, but Major General Virov suggested that hundreds of people were killed, including women, children, and babies. The firefight to recapture the territory lasted for eight hours and resulted in over 100 Hamas corpses being left behind. The general is concerned that the bodies may be booby-trapped. Some of the Hamas fighters were dressed in Israeli uniforms and helmets. Stories of those killed or kidnapped have begun to emerge, including a Canadian citizen who had lived in Bieri since 1999 and was a peace activist. Her son received indications that she may have been taken alive to Gaza, but there has been no official confirmation. Another family received a phone call from Hamas kidnappers with the message kidnap. Gaza. Gilad Shalit, similar to the case of Gilad Shalit, a former Israeli soldier who was kidnapped in 2006 and released five years later. Members of Alberta school football team charged with sex assault in locker room. The Toronto Star. Four members of a high school football team in Lethbridge, Alberta, have been charged with the sexual assault of a teammate. The incident occurred in the school's locker room after regular school hours on October 3. The accused, who are 16 and 17 years old, have been charged with sexual assault with a weapon, assault with a weapon, and forcible confinement. The assault was not part of hazing for the team, and the complainant has been receiving counseling and support. The accused have been released from custody but cannot have contact with the complainant or attend the school. They are scheduled to appear in court on October 25. Liberals extend amnesty order for assault-style firearms until after next election. The Toronto Star. The Canadian federal government has extended the amnesty period for its firearms buyback program, which aims to compensate owners of firearms banned in the aftermath of the 2020 Nova Scotia shooting rampage, by two years to October 30, 2025. The program was initially promised during the 2019 federal election and later during the 2021 campaign. The amnesty period applies to over 1,500 models and variants of assault-style firearms that were banned by the government. The government plans to establish a buyback program that will allow owners to turn in their firearms and be compensated. The extension of the amnesty period has prompted concern from gun control advocates and relief from firearms owners and retailers. The government is currently working on the compensation program, with the aim of launching the buyback by October 2025, at least for the commercial side. The cost of the program is estimated to be upwards of $750 million. Former Prince Edward Island Premier James Lee dead at 86. The Toronto Star. Former Prince Edward Island Premier James Lee, also known as Jim Lee, has passed away at the age of 86. Lee served as the province's 26th Premier from 1981 to 1986. He was first elected to the Legislative Assembly in 1975 and served in the cabinet of Premier John Angus Maclean before becoming the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party and Premier of Prince Edward Island. Lee was involved in the patriation of the Canadian Constitution and the creation of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. He was also credited with the opening of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and Atlantic Veterinary College in Charlottetown. Current PEI Premier Dennis King described Lee as a people person and a proud islander who was dedicated to improving the quality of life for islanders. Thief used phony document in $20 million gold heist, lawsuit against Air Canada claims. The Toronto Star. Brinks Incorporated, an American security company, has filed a lawsuit against Air Canada claiming that an unidentified individual gained access to the airline's cargo warehouse at Pearson Airport in Toronto and stole 400 kilograms of gold and nearly $2 million in cash. The thief reportedly presented a fraudulent waybill to Air Canada personnel and absconded with the cargo.
Brinks is seeking $23 million in damages, alleging that Air Canada was negligent and failed to follow appropriate security measures. The claims have not yet been tested in court and Air Canada has declined to comment on the matter. Exxon's $59.5 billion US dollar bet on fossil fuels has implications for Canadian oil patch, experts. The Toronto Star. Exxon Mobil's $59.5 billion acquisition of Pioneer Natural Resources is being seen as a vote of confidence in fossil fuels and a positive sign for the Canadian oil patch. While the long-term trend is towards declining demand for oil due to the energy transition, Exxon and many in the Canadian oil industry believe there is still at least a 15-year window of strong demand. This could lead to an increase in merger and acquisition activity in the Canadian oil patch, particularly among producers using hydraulic fracturing in the Montney region. Exxon's deal will create a major fracking operator in West Texas and is its largest buyout since acquiring Mobile two decades ago. Family mourns death of daughter with deep Ottawa connections killed in Israel. The Toronto Star. A Canadian citizen with connections to Ottawa was killed by Hamas militants in Israel, according to the head of the Jewish Federation of Ottawa. Adi Vital Kaplan, 33, was killed at her kibbutz near the Israeli border with the Gaza Strip. The family released a statement describing her as a beautiful person who brought love, laughter and a sense of purpose to her family. Two other Canadians have also been confirmed dead in the conflict. The Canadian government is organizing airlifts out of Tel Aviv for citizens who wish to leave, but there is little it can do for those in the Gaza Strip. BC. First Nation furious after federal government rejects order to protect owls. The Toronto Star. The federal government of Canada has reversed its decision to implement an emergency order to protect the endangered northern spotted owl, angering members of the Spuzzum First Nations community in British Columbia. The Canadian Wildlife Service stated that the government will not bring in the order to prevent logging in two watersheds in BC's Lower Fraser River Canyon. Instead, the government is endorsing a collaborative approach with the provincial government and Indigenous communities. The decision has upset community members, as the spotted owl is considered sacred and is seen as an indicator of the health of the region's old-growth forests. Ontario NDP legislator apologizes for, but doesn't retract, Middle East statement. The Toronto Star. Ontario NDP Member of Parliament Sarah Jama has apologized for a statement she made about the conflict between Israel and Hamas. In her original statement, Jama condemned the generation's long occupation of Palestine and described the situation in Gaza as apartheid and human rights violations, without mentioning the attack on Israel by Hamas militants. Jama's statement was not approved by the caucus, and NDP leader Marit Stiles publicly demanded that Jama retract it. Jama later apologized, stating that she condemns terrorism by Hamas but also believes that Israel's bombardment and siege on civilians in Gaza is wrong. Premier Doug Ford called on Jama to resign, and several Jewish groups called on Stiles to kick Jama out of caucus. Rolling Stones, MLB partner up for limited edition White Sox Cubs vinyl records for new album. Yahoo! The Rolling Stones and Major League Baseball have collaborated to produce limited edition vinyl records of the Stones' new album, Hackney Diamonds. Fans will be able to choose a vinyl record with a custom design for each of the 30 MLB teams. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your trusted observer from the Six Degrees world. Today, we have a collection of news stories that range from the tragic to the controversial, and even a fun collaboration between rock legends and America's favorite pastime. Let's dive in. First, we have the horrific aftermath of the massacre at Kibbutz Bieri in Israel. Israeli authorities have allowed reporters access to show the world the devastation caused by the Hamas gunmen who went door to door, targeting innocent families. The images and stories are heartbreaking, and Major General Itai Virov wanted reporters to understand how a pogrom smells to comprehend the Israeli reaction. It's a grim reminder of the ongoing conflict and the toll it takes on innocent lives. On a different note, four members of a high school football team in Lethbridge, Alberta, have been charged with the sexual assault of a teammate in the locker room. This is a disturbing incident that highlights the importance of addressing and preventing such acts of violence, even in places where trust and camaraderie should be fostered. Now, let's talk about firearms. The Canadian federal government has extended the amnesty period for its firearms buyback program, which aims to compensate owners of banned assault-style firearms. This move has sparked concern among gun control advocates and relief from firearms owners and retailers. The government is working on the compensation program, and the cost is estimated to be upwards of $750 million. We'll see how this unfolds in the coming years. In sad news, former Prince Edward Island Premier James Lee has passed away at the age of 86. 
Lee played a significant role in the patriation of the Canadian Constitution and the opening of important institutions in PEI. He was a dedicated public servant who strived to improve the lives of islanders. Now, let's talk about a daring heist. Brinks Incorporated, an American security company, has filed a lawsuit against Air Canada, alleging that someone gained access to their cargo warehouse at Pearson Airport and stole a substantial amount of gold and cash. The thief apparently presented a fraudulent document and disappeared with the loot. The claims have not yet been tested in court, but it's a reminder that security measures must be taken seriously. Moving on to the world of energy, ExxonMobil's acquisition of Pioneer Natural Resources is seen as a vote of confidence in fossil fuels and a positive sign for the Canadian oil patch. While the long-term trend may be towards declining oil demand, Exxon and many in the industry believe there is still a significant window of opportunity. This could lead to increased merger and acquisition activity in the Canadian oil patch, particularly in regions like the Montney area. Turning to a tragic loss, a Canadian citizen with connections to Ottawa was killed by Hamas militants in Israel. Adi Vital Kaplan was described as a beautiful person who brought love and laughter to her family. Two other Canadians have also been confirmed dead in the conflict. The Canadian government is organizing airlifts for citizens who wish to leave, but the situation remains tense. In environmental news, the federal government has reversed its decision to implement an emergency order to protect the endangered northern spotted owl in British Columbia. This has caused anger among members of the Spuzzum First Nations community, as the owl holds cultural and ecological significance. Collaboration with the provincial government and indigenous communities is now being endorsed, but community members are disappointed with the decision. Lastly, we have a fun collaboration between the Rolling Stones and Major League Baseball. Limited edition vinyl records of the Stones' new album, Hackney Diamonds, will be available with custom designs for each of the 30 MLB teams. It's a unique way to bring together rock music and the passion of baseball fans. That wraps up our news for today. As always, I encourage you to share your thoughts and join the discussion. What are your thoughts on these diverse topics? I'm all ears. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.